So I'm going to leave the exposure alone here and I'm just going to bring up the contrast to about 5. Maybe raise the shadows a bit. About 25. I'm going to bring down the blacks just a touch to about uh, maybe 15. I'm going to go down to transform. I'm going to hit guided. That helps. I'm also going to do a crop, a 16 by 9. That looks good right there. Um, I might unlock it and bring up the bottom just a bit. Okay, now a little bit more of a letterbox style. I'm going to bring up the texture to about 7. But um, basically I'm keeping things pretty basic. The lighting for this image was quite good. It's got a good shadow. The subject is um, kind of interesting. I'm going to raise the shadows to about 7. Not too much. And I'm going to go to this last control point here and bring it up two clicks. That's all it took. Now I'm going to bring down uh, the darks a bit and then raise the light some. Sort of get that light a little bit more intense. It's a really nice contrasty image with the light uh, coming in on the left side like that. I really like how the lighting is here. Uh, I think this was taken around uh, somewhere around 12 or 1, so you get these really nice harsh shadows. So sometimes shooting in the daylight on, this was a pretty clear day, uh, can work out really well, especially at noon. Uh, when you do get those really harsh uh, shadows, adding more sharpening to every image, um, you know, it's not really needed all the time. Uh, for effects, I'm going to try uh, to add a vignette and see how that looks. And now I'm going to go over to the mask tool and I'm going to do a linear gradient. And the point is I want to darken uh, the sky just a bit. Uh, I could try to do a um, select sky and I'm curious how that would work. I'll click that and see. Sometimes it works better than others but I'm getting a little bit too much on my uh, subject. This girl with her hat and her shirt um, <clears throat> and it's also getting on the railing. I could go in here and start to erase that but I don't really want to um, so I'm just going to use the linear gradient darken really the top of the sky. And that looks good right there. Now obviously when I darkened it down just a bit I'm seeing some uh, spots uh, on the sensor. So just go over to that little, looks like a little band-aid, and um, just start clicking these spots out. I just raise the shadows just a bit to about 35, maybe even 40. I'm wanting to keep uh, some of these dark shadows on the ground and the bench. I like how that looks, but if I don't raise these shadows too much, and obviously if I don't start messing with the exposure, I still get that, but I was uh, finding raising the shadows a bit more was uh, bringing out some of the details in this um, girl's shirt here. So uh, I'm going to take it over into Photoshop and do the rest of the edit there. For this, the main thing in Photoshop what I want to do is I want to bring out a little bit more uh, details here in the hat, in her hair, and um, see how that goes. So I'm going to make a layer, a layer mask for uh, the curves, and I'm just going to raise up right here in the middle and just kind of keep raising it just a bit and somewhere in there. Now I'm going to invert this layer and zoom in here on the subject and get the brush tool and then I'm just going to bring up some of these um, highlights in the uh, subject just to make her stand out just a bit more I'm going to raise the flow to about 100. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave it at 20 just to be on the safe side. And as I say, if you keep brushing in a certain area, you just start to add more and more um, of the effect. It just multiplies.
maybe a little in the bench here. So you can see I did bring up quite a bit of the highlights. <clears throat> I'm going to raise the control point just a bit and then I'm going to bring down the opacity. And that looks good. The point is you don't want it to look unnatural um, unless you do. And I might bring the control point down just a little. So they're not real drastic changes, but I find um, making some of these adjustments in Photoshop is a lot easier than uh, in Lightroom. Uh, because of this uh, curve, these layer masks, these curves that you can make, um, and then the way the brush tool in here works, I just find it a lot easier. I'm sure a lot of you have both Photoshop and Lightroom, so you know the way I look at it is you might as well use them. What I'm doing right now is I added another curve layer, and basically I'm wanting to brighten up uh, this section right in here. Um, which obviously I already have since I raised the uh, curve uh, control point in the middle. But I don't want it to affect the whole image. I also don't want it to look as intense as it does right now. So I'm going to invert this and then I'm going to use the brush tool. And I'm just going to brush in, like I say, right in down the center of the image. Um, just straight along and um, to sort of bring up the light a bit. And I'm still at 20% flow, which is good. Um, I'm going to do it one more time. And I'm going to turn it on and off. And you can see that that made quite a big difference. I also have a control point here at the darks, um, so I don't lose so much uh, contrast, really. But that looks good. I'm going to bring down the opacity to about 75 or 80. Now, basically to carry over what I just did here in the sky, and I'm going to now carry it over to the uh, ground here. And I want to just bring it up a bit. So I'm going to add another curve layer. And I'm going to do the same thing. Start in the middle and raise it up a bit while looking at the ground and seeing that, you know, I'm... I'm happy with how it looks or I'm not. Now for this one I'm going to bring down the darks so 61 output, 61 uh, for the input and the reason I do that is because I don't want to mess with the uh, the real dark lines here. I like those shadow lines quite a bit but I do want to bring up the uh, sidewalk uh, just to show the light. You know I brightened up the sky and the ocean is, is brighter, so now the ground needs to be a bit brighter as well. So I'm going to invert this because I don't want it to affect the entire image. And now I'm just going to brush it on. For this one, I'm going to turn the flow up to 100 and just brush it down here on the ground. And that's it. And I can turn the opacity down just a bit. And that looks good. So for that, that's it. Um, this is kind of one of those images where the lighting is, I think it's quite good. These kind of images don't take very long to edit. Um, you know, it's just a few minor things. And um, for me, it was nice to take it over into Photoshop and do these uh, curve adjustments. Um, I think if you try it, and you first start to edit your image in Lightroom and then you think of certain things you'd like to bring out. Um, if you bring it over into Photoshop, you'll find that it is a lot more user-friendly um, than Lightroom. Not saying Lightroom's bad or it's, it's, it's hard to do mask in there, because it isn't, but it is a little easier in Photoshop.